And then somebody comes to the boss's office with a mistake and says, hey boss, I made a mistake. And then the first, the immediate reaction of the boss is to roll their eyes. <sighs> and then they say, okay, yeah, but you know, we have, a, we have a, a just culture here and it's an opportunity to learn. So let's look at it, let's talk it through. But the damage has already happened because it was this first nonverbal reaction that tells the truth. <laughs> One of the biggest challenges can be conflicting human needs here. And I, I can tell that you are very passionate about human needs. So I'm dying to know your view about this. So psychological safety can fight against that need to feel like they belong. How, what advice can you give to people where they can establish psychological safety, where people can stick up their hand and say, hey, I'm not sure about this, in a way that doesn't make them feel like they're going to be the one that doesn't fit in, the one that doesn't belong. The first thing that pops up in my mind is by showing them that it's safe, by demonstrating that it's safe. Because you see, you can tell people we're having a safe environment and everybody can say what's on their mind and it's safe, blah, blah, blah. And then somebody comes to the boss's office with a mistake and says, hey boss, I made a mistake. And then the first, the immediate reaction of the boss is to roll their eyes. <sighs> and then they say, okay, yeah, but you know, we have, a, we have a, a just culture here and it's an opportunity to learn. So let's look at it, let's talk it through. But the damage has already happened because it was this first, nonverbal reaction that tells the truth. The culture of an organization and the climate within a team lies in the micro moments and the micro experiences that people make with each other. That's why, that's why I keep saying that leadership development more than anything else is personality development. Because who you are as a person when in a leading position will shed its light on everything you do, influences everything. Because if you want to be authentic, it has to be, it has to come from the inside. So make people experience on a, on a moment by moment basis that it is actually safe um, to speak up and to admit mistakes, maybe even by admitting your own mistakes. You know, as a, as a lead, first scenario, leader made a mistake, wrong decision but believes that a leader is not allowed to make mistakes and has to have all the answers and has to be the smartest person in the room, etc. So we'll try to hide the mistake, cover up and pretend everything's under control, right? What happens to cross, uh, trust, credibility and acceptance of that person by the yeah. team? Yeah. Down the drain. And, and Right? And it becomes a it becomes a learned behavior. Then Thomas, they they'll start yes. mimicking it themselves. They'll, yes. they'll they'll lose trust of the leader, and then they'll start learning that behavior themselves. Oh, that must be how I get on around here, right? Exactly. So, yeah, very, exactly. Very good. So let's look at the other scenario. Suppose the leader made a mistake, stands in front of the team and says, "Guys, we have a situation. I made a mistake. I." I obviously made the wrong decision. Now we need to find a solution for that. Would you help me out here? And, and I need you to, to, to resolve this issue. Showing vulnerability, which is a crucial part of authenticity. Mm. Now guess what happens? Guess what happens with credibility, trust, and acceptance of this person as their leader up through the roof? Because people know, okay, if something happens, if there is an issue, this person will be transparent, and they will tell me so I can trust. Even if from a, from a different standpoint, some people might say this admitting a mistake can be seen as a weakness. It is not, it is clearly not. 